Good evening, everyone. I'm Alham Shafai, director at IE Art Projects Online Art Foundation. And I would like to take my chance to welcome all of you to Beyond the Visible, Nassim Pachi's artist talk in connection to her current solo exhibition at IE Art Projects. Nassim Pachi is a Hong Kong-based Iranian uh, German painter. She spent the first two decades of her life growing up in Iran. Her education, career, and family have since moved her around Europe, West Africa, and Southeast Asia. The social, cultural, and political paradoxes she encounters are her creative field. She challenges her audience to comprehend the contrast she presents in her aesthetically rich portraits. Nassim's work is exhibited and collected internationally. She received both her Bachelor and Master of Art in Illustration from HAW University, Hamburg, Germany. Now I would like to present a video of the exhibition. Hi, Nassim. How are you? Good to see you today. Hi. Um, can... Thank you for having me. Hi. Everybody. You're most welcome. Uh, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said about me, this is Nassim. Um, I'm currently based in Hong Kong. Um, visual artist, painter. Um, excited to be with you guys. Thank you for being here today. Uh, first, I would like to ask, why photorealistic paintings? Um, this is a good question. Um, I actually started to paint from 2013 to paint photorealistic. Um, in my early age in Iran, um, I used to practice Persian painting. Uh, this is a kind of painting which is um, very mostly work in a very, very small format and this is decorative and um, 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 uh, you use normally um, gouache and watercolor. Um, but later um, when I began to travel and study in Germany, um, I started to get to know um, many other artists and um, I was very interested to experience different um, techniques. Um, so mostly I was interested in work of Lucien Freud. So I had a period that I was working on expressive realism and impasto. Um, but since 2013, I came to realize that photorealism is a... Um, a kind of style that I can express myself through that. Um, and this is the closest to my character. So since 2013, I'm doing my figurative painting in this style. That's amazing. What is the drive behind your practice? Um, actually, um, many things, but the most important thing is that I get to know myself through my art. Um, 
this is very important. This is a very meditative process. I get in a zone um, that um, I feel complete and connected. And when I do my art, I mostly don't realize how time passes by. And um, besides of that, I would say um, the desire for creation and um, um, the passion for uh, socializing and um, this kind of stuff, but mostly, mainly um, that I know myself more through my art and I explore um, myself and my character. That's the main reason. That's very important, actually. And um, your art is influenced by your upbringing and international adulthood. Can you explain how those influenced you and what is the role of identity in your art and how do you enhance that? Um, you mentioned about my upbringing. I spent um, almost 22 years of my life in Iran. Um, I experienced eight years of war and a revolution. And uh, it was a closed society and um, there was lack of freedom and freedom of speech. And my family, they didn't like that I study art. Um, so I studied something else. Um, and when I moved out from Iran, um, I um, actually uh, start to see the world from another lens, um, another perspective. Um, and um, um, and by being in different countries, I began um, to see more about my character and ask who I am. And um, um, I that was interesting that I recognize very similar issues um, that I saw in Iran in many other countries, even in uh, open societies like the stuff uh, related to women right mm, and um, uh, so that's actually influenced my art because seeing this stuff it just triggered me it reminded me what I have experienced in Iran and um, I just came to realize that I'm very sensitive to these social and political issues and um, uh, the stuff related to uh, freedom and so then I started to bring them in my art. And um, sorry, I think I need water. <laughs> yeah, that's OK. But what you what you were talking like, I totally can feel you because I'm from the same background. So um, I just can understand all of it. And uh, I just want to say, you know, just the way you brought those up and you know, just you went through the process through your art. That is amazing. And um, I really adore that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Actually, what you see in my art is the process of transformation, uh, which has been happening during these years of living in different societies. You know, you go through many things and you explore and you come up with some ideas and then you put up together. But mostly people that you're coming from Iran, somehow they understand my work maybe better. But even people from other countries, they ask also, they somehow realize there's something behind the that. And um, they ask what is deeper meaning behind the this mostly. And, um, and I think you ask how I enhance um, identity. So yes. I would say I, I enhance it through contrasting between the subject and the background. So it's mostly my subject has conflict with the background and the background here could be representative of like cultural and religious and tradition and many complications that we have in this area. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what is the role of pattern since you talk about the background? <laughs> your work yeah. So, and uh, yeah because we see a lot of patterns in your works and so just that is very complicated and you know um I, I want to know about that and also the body in your art and my question also is why do you mostly paint naked women um so just if you can answer those questions yeah. would be perfect 
So many questions. Uh, <laughs> let's go from the bare bodies, which was the last question. Okay. <laughs> so um, naked bodies, I um, they are representing freedom and being natural in my art. Um, what is the meaning of bare body in Iran and in Germany, two countries that they had a, a big role in my life and the cultures, they had a big role in my art and life. Uh, um, it's The meaning is very different. In Iran, naked body just seen as a kind of sexual thing, but in Germany, I learned this could be a natural thing. And then when I started to learn about Lucien Freud, the way he uh, represent and paint bodies then that was another way to learn that we could look at body as a kind of natural subject and that's why I don't want to bring any closing uh, any clothes on them because I feel that that actually distract what I want to bring so I just want to have a body and pattern and patterns here depends on theme of my work they're rep they representing complicated social limitation and identity and, you know, religious oppression. Any of them could be, depends on what I want to see in that work. So I would like that they confront to the bare body that is the kind of, um, I'm exploring the connection and the conflict and the relationship between them. Uh, so that's why you see this intricate pattern um, that could have any of this meaning that I mentioned, and uh, the bare body here is um, is representative of this freedom that mostly women, um, you know, don't have it in many societies. That's amazing, and uh, you are full of you know just um, paradoxes. <laughs> I mean, just your art, but this is making it even more interesting to me i i seriously enjoy um looking at them and uh i kind of feel you know just they are complex in a way because you know just you try to to you know just to to bring different meanings you know just different uh from different societies even though you know just they are conflicting somehow but you know just that's a beauty of your own Thank so you. uh you're welcome and um uh, how did you come up with this idea of not focusing on the subject's portraits? Because we can see um, mostly, you know, just uh, the, the women, the bodies, they don't have faces, no portraits. And uh, yeah, just if you can explain that. Yeah, I just wanted to first mention, yeah, you mentioned a good thing, which is paradox in my work. So I learned it again in my childhood about this paradox and um, I bring it in my work. So you see this paradox and conflict in my work. Um, and then about the face that you ask, um, I, I don't want that the attention drawn to the eyes and face because I believe eyes can get attention first when you look at a picture with a, a portrait. Um, another reason I don't want that they're being judged how the subject look like or um, where is the subject from, where is the person from. Um, so my, um, my goal is something else. I just want to demonstrate this relationship between body and uh, this figure and these patterns. Um, and um, I would like to encourage my audience to, to explore the deeper meaning of the painting rather than, um, you know, being drawn to the face or eyes. Yeah, that's a very interesting way of, you know, just um, uh, bringing or expressing, you know, just whatever you mean or what you want to say. Uh, you know, to the audiences and, you know, just somehow leave a space for curiosity, you know, and then, you know, just that, okay. I think, you know, that that is important. I actually very much like to play with these and to make a kind of puzzle um, to, to, mm, to open a conversation, to mm, create this possibility that, uh, that people explore more and, um, ask some questions, you know, not straight away. Um, 
I mean, you can show the faces as well, but I think personally, if I don't show them, then I can get more um, um, kind of connection and attraction to 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 the patterns and to the figure, I believe. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, so we talk about the paradoxes, right? So, so the idea of paradox shows up in your works a lot and in a kind of tension between various elements related to the social, cultural, and political. What is your intention with these paradoxes and contrasts? Um, I um, There is a protest in my work. Um, even it's not very like I don't approach it directly to show it so because I don't want to impose any message um, but there is a rebellion and protest in my work so there is paradox there and I'm just bringing the stuff that um, together that in a um, real life they might not seen together you know I bring the patterns that they might see in a holy place or in mosque or and then contrasting with a bare body, bare legs. So you feel this tension, even I'm trying to um, have a very gentle and subtle approach, um, but there is a protest there. There's this stuff that actually, uh, for my experience being as a woman, it bothered me um, and I look like, uh, and I like to, to, uh, to address them in my work. So that's why you see in some works this this kind of tension. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, thank you. And um, okay, the question is: the title of the exhibition is "Beyond the Visible." Can you elaborate on the title? So, um, my work might seem aesthetically pleasing but it has many layers of um, um, personal journey and pain and self-exploring and like experiencing different cultures and challenging stuff that you have through all of them. Um, so by choosing this name beyond the visible, I, I just wanted to uh, address there is many layers behind of that and um, besides of that I'm also dealing with my own self-censorship um, that um, when I'm creating a work um, I have it somehow I learned it from my childhood um, and I have it so that's why it's more than what you see um, it's not whole story that you see as a visible I totally can relate with that. So, <laughs> yeah, but that's, uh, I think that would be like, you know, just, it is um, kind of interesting for whoever they are not from that background to hear that from you. And so, uh, yeah, just uh, that maybe make them curious to, to study about the culture <laughs> uh, we are coming uh, from. But yeah, just that's amazing how, you know, just um, the whole life story and experiences and process, everything, you know, just uh, showing up. Uh, through your works and uh, I believe that is honesty and uh, that's why I admire you know just uh, it's amazing thank you and um, you studied illustration right and um, does it influence your painting do you feel you know just you got any influence from that um, <clears throat> I think personally yes while studying illustration I learned searching and a storytelling, and um, and I worked on many formative illustration projects. So I think the way is my process to create my current art. Yes, I use this skills that I learned there. Um, I do a lot of research before I start um, my painting, and um, my subjects they have all stories, not one, <laughs> but many. Um, and then um, I use Photoshop as well for creating my image before I do my painting. And I learned the skills for Adobe 
mostly on while I was studying. Um, so the pictures that you're seeing, um, I the the final image that I paint, I've worked on it before on Photoshop, and um, almost ninety percent of that is finalized on Photoshop. Then after that, I will paint it on canvas. So I would say yes, and my paintings are also illustrative. You know, they are very detailed, and yeah, that's why I would say yeah, it had a role in it. That's amazing. So just um, that's good. You you already started to talk a little bit about your process because my next question is like you know just can you can you um, tell us a little bit about your process? Had how the way you work or you know just how long does it take for you in general or you know just if you can explain a little bit, it would be great. Yeah, it's it's actually a complex process um, that evolves over time. I'm mostly working on many, many projects all together and I'm painting also partly a lot of paintings together. Um, and the process might take years. Sometimes I start to conceptualize a subject or an idea for myself. And then I start to explore and learn about it and research. So it depends on where I am, what is the situation. Um, so it might take a few months a few years um and it depends on where i'm living when i start a painting until i finish it like um there is a painting letting go uh, this is actually inspired by my connection to singaporean culture when i lived there and i started the painting in singapore but then i moved to germany and then the painting wasn't yet finished and before we settled in Germany, we moved to Hong Kong, then if the painting is finished in Hong Kong. So it, it it varies. It might be like a few months or a few years. Uh, and um, uh, and I, I work mostly on series. You see, for example, in Molting, this is five paintings. I have Contemplating Freedom, is three of them. I have the ballerinas, uh, Cotton Spin, uh, there are like two of them. So if I'm not done, if I'm not done with subject and I think I have more to explore, then yes, I will um, continue more to create in this direction uh, or this team. Um, so I would say the the process is just kind of um, can take long. And um, as I mentioned, I first conceptualized the, the idea and then I start to take um, many photos. And then I combine these photos on Photoshop, many photos. And I might find my um, patterns also in the uh, internet, but mostly I prefer to go myself in museum or wherever I think I can use the patterns or I can uh, get a photograph from that. So it's a kind of, um, then I'm in, in Photoshop, um, I almost 90% of that is finalized. And then it's come to the time to to paint it. And sometimes you see in the middle of painting, I'm not um, satisfied with what I want to uh, show. And then it might get a kind of a few years gap or a few months gap. And, and I come back again to it. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that I would say a long process. Long process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh do you do you like uh also a little bit talk about the technical part of it like you know just the, the choose of mediums or like you know just uh, yes. yeah your preference yeah yes i actually should have mentioned that when you ask about body and um patterns so i use for um body uh painting body i use oil because it's i came to realize it's um it works better to paint layers uh, for gazing. And then uh, for um, patterns, um, I work with acrylic because it's um, better works with complexity of the patterns. Um, but then again, for me, these two um, uh, medium um, technique, I'm using colors. They, they're also in contrast, you know, the way they dry, the way uh, they work. Um, and so I liked, I enjoyed to bring this um, 
contrast and uh, things in my work and using the technique as well. Yeah, wonderful. And uh, can you explain how you investigate the boundaries in your artwork? Uh, um, as mentioned before, I have this self-censorship in my work. Um, and I don't show also the um, natural sexual of women as well. That part I don't show. Um, so sometimes I have to play around of pictures because when you don't want to show them, you don't want to show the face. <laughs> then you have to get many pictures and then playing around in Photoshop to see how you can um, uh, finalize your picture. And, um, um, and then I don't uh, approach very directly a subject. So I mostly avoid to impose uh to to impose my my opinion on a work so it's a kind of subtle approach to a subject um and you see that i use many bright colors um even the subject is harsh um because i believe the life is beautiful and i'm um i'm looking for hope and that's why i'm i i think i use the bright colors to show that um and then again, this is also a paradox, you know, the life is beautiful, but there is many stuff that challenges us and there's many ups and downs and we're dealing with this paradox every day. So this is what I like. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is the aesthetic. So <laughs> um, tell us how you feel about the expanding of the digital work. It might not be related to, you know, just to, to your art, but this is something, you know, just because I know about your background and also, you know, this, uh, this is the, uh, I think, I believe this is the first virtual exhibition, solo exhibition for you. So, and you know, just um, so many things are happening right now. I just want to know your opinion about that. How do you feel about it? Uh, we see actually since, to my knowledge, since the um, pandemic, COVID pandemic, we see um, uh, many uh, digital uh, possibilities for artists. Um, and we see many galleries that they um, have online galleries. And we have, I think, art residences, museums. Um, and online courses that we all, um, to my knowledge, uh, we experienced that mostly since pandemic and a lot of uh, physical artists also, they, um, and they started to connect virtually. Um, and we see also um, NFTs as well, which I last year was informed about them. So I would say this uh, experience of seeing all my works in a kind of um, uh, a virtual exhibition was amazing because I always wished uh, to see all of this work together, but because some of them were sold, so I had never this um, possibility to see all of them together. And I, to be honest, never thought seeing them virtually actually being so exciting um, but it was amazing to see um, how they look together um, in a space so I would say um, to my experience we're going to use more of this kind of digital possibilities and um, tools um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you and uh, do you have any upcoming projects you would like to share with us? So no hard feelings. If there's something secret you don't want to share with us, that's fine. But <laughs> yeah, we would, we would be happy to know more. <laughs> there is many at this moment, but one <laughs> of them is more um, clear is uh, about um, nature and culture of Hong Kong. This is a bit, I think, is going to direction of illustration because I like to get um, contact to the universities and see how I can inform kids about it. Because, you know, Hong Kong is a very multicultural city and um, 
a very important financial city in Asia. But what is not talked about that about this city is the beautiful and very unique name. I'm, I'm living in a nature full of, um, in, in an island here, full of snakes and insects. Um, and I think there's a potential to work about this and connecting that to the uh, Hong Kong culture. This is my project at this moment, well, which I uh, talk about that more in future when I have more work. Yeah, that's awesome. So just, um, yeah, I, I would like to see more of that whenever, you know, just you finalize a project and uh, yeah, that would be great uh, to see what you're doing. <laughs> you know, with Hong Kong. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, Nasib. Uh, do you have uh, anything you want to share, or something I missed, I forgot to ask, or you know, just you know, the floor is yours. So <laughs> whatever you want to share with us. Well, you. I think you caught me from any side. <laughs> so you asked <laughs> anything else. Well, I think um, I might got to mention a few things but at this moment i don't have presence of mind i think um i think we talk almost about everything um but mm -hmm. i'm very open if anybody has any question please yeah, feel sure. free yeah and thanks again so now i would like to to invite a participant if, if you know just they have any questions if you like to ask nasim so you have the chance right now Hi, Stefano. Hi, how are you? Can you listen to me? Yes, yes. Yes, first of all, I want to congratulate with Nazim because uh, your art uh, is really beautiful and uh, with a lot of deep uh, content and I really like it. And uh, I have a question to you, Nazim. You have a, a six, six year old boy, if I remember well that is also creating art, no? And my question yeah. to you is, what are you teaching, if I can use this word, uh, to him in order uh, to let him also enjoy art and uh, be free to create it? Uh, because we know that it is important to transmit passion also to the younger generations. What are you doing with your kid in order uh, to help him in improving and uh, creating his art? Thank you for your question. Um, it's actually a very good point and very good question. Um, I have been teaching many people, but not my son. First of all, he doesn't listen to me. <laughs> uh, but indirectly, I try to buy the books or provide stuff that it helps him to to understand more about art and create art. Um, and um, he has been himself very great. But then when I think about that, since he's six months old, I was hanging him on myself and I was painting. So I think for him, he has, he has seen always these brushes and paints and everything. And he believes somehow he thinks is his perception that everybody can paint. Um, and he's quite a lot doing a lot of um, artistic stuff. And he joined also NFTs. And um, for NFTs, I think he done much better than me. I know that I promoted him. I help him in that direction. But he has been himself like um, very creative. But not just him. All kids are like that. We We underestimate them like... When I gave him um, the um, iPad with Procreate, um, to be honest, he learned so fast that I couldn't believe. And then he was teaching me what to do with Procreate because I'm mostly on Photoshop, so I don't know much about Procreate. Um, and be besides of that, the subjects that he's also interested somehow influencing me as well. For example, his love for nature um, also caused that I am now considering um, a project about nature and culture of Hong Kong. So this is a kind of mutual way. From him, I get inspiration and I try to pass him something, but it's not much directly that I sit with him and I tell him, now let's sit and paint like this or paint like 
that or do this, that like this or like that. So he just figured out by being with me because, you know, he's he asked me, can I sell my art? Because he sees his mother selling his uh, her art. This is something that kids, I think, when, when the parents are um, artists, they, they will learn somehow themselves. I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you very much for your answer. And he is he also passionate about the physical art or just the digital? Both, actually, he does both, and he's very good also in um, physical. Actually, before physical, uh, before digital, which happened last year, I I think I passed him in. Um, I'm thinking that was October last year that I gave him iPad. Um, before that, he was creating um, uh, physical, yeah. And he, he tried also canvas and, you know, I just offered him to see how he reacts. Because my parents, they're very much against art and uh, they thought you can't earn through art. So I thought um, I can show to my child it's, it's different when he starts from a early age and if he has passion for it. Thank you very much and congratulations again. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Estefano, for asking such a wonderful question. And uh, thanks, Nassim, for answering. Uh, is there anyone here who uh, wants to ask a question from Nassim why we have her here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no hand raised. I still can see Stefano's hands raised. Stefano, do you have any any other question? No, sorry, I cannot <laughs> uh, put it down. It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. So, so if there... we... <laughs> yeah, okay, go I ahead. Hope... I hope. Thank you. I hope we have been so clear that nobody has any question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, just I normally try to you know just go um deep, you know, and just bring up whatever you know just because I'm curious so just I would like to to learn from the artist and um uh you know just that help me you know just to 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 move forward like with my thinking or like maybe I, I'm missing something in my life or in my art you know just but while listening to the concept to the you know just um to the process and everything so just I learn every time I talk to wonderful artists like you so I hope you know just that you know just like i could cover everything <laughs> which is yeah i'm sure you know just um if i want to go on like you know i will have a lot of questions about all the details but you know just i know your time is valuable and you know just we will discuss later on about all of those so uh nasim do you want to say something before i close the session um i would like to thank you and i'm really appreciated you gave me this possibility to experience this virtual um exhibition um it was much much more better than i thought <laughs> um seeing all this work all together um and thank you for having me and asking me these questions and listening to me you're most welcome that's a pleasure and uh, i i am sure um you know all the audiences uh, would be you know pleased um to see your works and uh, later on, we are going to have this um, this talk uh, uploaded on YouTube. So just uh, everyone will have a chance to to watch the recording and uh, listen to your experience. And Thank thanks you. again, Nassim. Thank and, you. Uh, I would like to take my chance to thank Dr. Johan Osman uh, for his amazing critique on Nassim's words. I invited him to come here today, but he was busy in... Um, you know, just with something, so just he couldn't make it, but I will definitely, you know, just send the link later on, you know, just uh, for him to watch uh, the talk. And um, so the e-catalog is available on the website, so just uh, whoever is interested, you know, just is also, you know, in a PDF and they can download and, you know, just uh, look at uh, the artworks and also read the wonderful critic by Dr. Johan. And also, I would like to thank so our wonderful team, Te Ki Hong, Salma Al Mansuri, Fatila Ghani, and Amal Purnasiri for their great contribution and help for this exhibition.
thanks again, Nassim, for showing your work and sharing your experience with us today. Visit the exhibition at www.ierprojects.com. The exhibition will run until 30th November 2022. Have a lovely evening and hope to see you all soon. Thank you.